Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll talk about a topic which, in my opinion, perhaps is the most important carpet, uh, concept to understand for the math part of the exam. Math part, as you know, does not allow you to use a calculator. You must do all the problems by hand. And therefore, if we sit there and try to do the problems exactly the way that are, that are given to us, as they are presented to us, like a goody two-shoe, in a very academic, very nerdy, very geeky way, it becomes very time-consuming. You will never get anywhere. We must learn how to estimate numbers that are given to us. We must learn how to round things, which is what we're going to talk about today. There are, there are, there are three points here that you see here. These three sentences that you see here, they are taken verbatim from the very last paragraph on page number 75. I want you to turn to page 75. And the reason I'm going to go through the trouble of writing it, the, the entire paragraph verbatim on the blackboard is because it's very important. It's a very important concept. Rounding and estimation, part one of three. Let's get going. We are on page number 75, the very last paragraph. It says, estimating and rounding are two skills that make many problems quicker and easier to solve. Obviously, it makes many problems quicker and easier to solve if we round and if we estimate. We mustn't try to solve every single problem by, given, by, by the numbers that are given exactly the way they are. It goes on to say, it goes on to say, good judgment should be employed when deciding if estimating and rounding are appropriate, which is very important. It is, it is, a, it is an art. It is, it, is, it is not a science. It is an art. You must employ good judgment as to when is the appropriate juncture, when is the appropriate time, when is the appropriate place to round and estimate. It is a skill that you develop with practice. And at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you where to go and look for some problems where you'll get more practice on grounding and estimation. Let's continue. Part, so sentence number three says, sometimes a ballpark figure is quite, is quite good. It's, it's good enough. Sometimes a ballpark figure is good enough. Or to be more precise, because of the fact that I put down the, that it, I'm writing, writing it verbatim in the book they use is, in the, word, in, the, in the book the word that they use is, Sometimes the ballpark figure is, they go on to say, sometimes the ballpark figure is reasonable. It's good enough. It's reasonable. There we go. Let's move on to the fourth sentence. As I said, I'm going to write, them, uh, write all of these verbatim. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you some problems where that you can uh, practice on to get some more practice as to when is the appropriate place, when is the appropriate time, and what is the proper way to estimate. Number four. Even, it goes on to say, even in a laboratory setting, even in a laboratory setting, in a lab, of course, precision is very important. Where precision, where precision and Accuracy are extremely important. Even in that situation where precision and accuracies are accuracy are very uh, extremely important, even in those situation, a quick estimate, a quick estimate. Can tell you if the mathematical procedure was correct. When you finish doing the actual calculation, it's always a good idea to do a quick estimation in your head. To make sure that uh, the answers that, uh, that your gut feeling is telling you is actually what you're looking at on the piece of paper is something reasonable something close to it do you understand if a quick estimation tells you that the answer is going to be around 40 something and the 
and the calculation that you did comes out to be 400 then obviously something has gone wrong something has gone wrong drastically and it's a big difference giving a patient 10 times the amount of dose than what you're supposed to and if you intend to do that you better have the bucket ready because he might kick one let's move on so that, that is question of sentence number four the last sentence that I'm going to put on the blackboard the last sentence that I'm going to put on the blackboard is actually not in the book I'm going to put it on the blackboard it is not as I said in the book number five There is a there is a there is a fine line between estimating and there is a fine line between estimating and going bonkers that is not in the book but that is what we have to learn here as to how far do you go when you're estimating it there, 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 you have to exercise uh, reasonableness you have to exercise uh, prudence you cannot just go bonkers and just go willy-nilly estimating rounding things up it doesn't work that way Here's what I want you to watch. To get some more practice, to get, well not to get some more practice, we haven't done anything at all yet, to get some practice, to get some practice on estimation and rounding. I would like you to watch T's day 19 through 25 7 videos in those 7 videos we do several problems where you will see how far you can go and what is considered reasonable when you're doing estimation and rounding during the exam. And these seven videos that you see there are the problems, math problems, that came from, oh I don't have the old book, the fifth, I don't have the old book in front of me, I left it in the other room. The fifth edition, this is the sixth edition that I'm holding here, the fifth edition of the same study manual, we did the every single problem out of fifth edition and you will find the solutions to all the problems from the fifth edition from day number one through 80. T's, 5th edition, day 1 through 80. There are no videos from 81 to 100. I started I started a new series from day 101 when, bega when we began the 6th edition. So there is nothing there from 81 to 100. The solutions to all the math problems in the 5th edition, one more time, are from day number 1 through 80. And just type in T's, day 19, 19, 20, and then five more 21 22 23 24 and 25 there are seven videos as i said you'll get plenty of practice there let's do one problem right now let's do one problem problem that you will find on page number 76 very first problem on page 76 the very first problem it says which of the following estimate which of the following estimate, which of the following estimates answers, oh Jesus Christ, I can't read, let me write down, which of the following estimates the answer to, and here is the question, 418.9 times 3.879 over 
53.7 and look at the four ounce choices and we'll see which two are definitely not what it, what any reasonable person would say is okay to do for example for example let's write down all of them here a 419 times 4 over 54 419 of course 419 this is 418.418.9 that's quite reasonable to do 3.879 we're not going to deal with that freaking thing of course we can round it to 4 we can round it to 4 because it's 3.879 which when you round it to 10th digit it becomes 3.9 it's very close to 4 you understand had it been 3. Point, instead of 3.879 had it been 3.379 we would have probably rounded it not probably we would have rounded it to 3.5 had it been 3.379 or 3.479 then in that case we would not have rounded to 4 just because 4 is easier to deal with than 3.5 just because 4 is easier we do not round 3.379 to 4 that's what I call that's what we will call going bunkers but 3.879 if you round it to 4 that is quite reasonable over 54 of course 50, 53 and that, that, that's, a, that's a good candidate we're not sure if that's the best estimate among the four, but that's a good candidate. Let's leave it there. B says, our job is to pick the best answer. 400, even though, even though, even though they do not actually say which of the following is the best answer, it's always understood that in a multiple choice question, your job is to pick the best answer among the four or five answer choices that are presented to us. Well, what's wrong here? Well, there are several things wrong here. First of all, if you're going to round 418.9, if somebody would have rounded 418.9 to 420, that's quite okay. That's quite okay by me. That's quite reasonable to say, let's pretend 418.9 is 420. But you cannot round it to 400. That's just going bonkers. This is fine. This is fine. But to say that 53.7 is all of a sudden 50, it makes a big difference between dividing a quantity into 50 equal parts uh, as opposed to dividing the, that same quantity into 54 equal parts. It makes a huge difference. Your estimate is no longer an estimate. It is taking liberties. It's going bonkers. This one is no good. This one is no good. It's not even a contender. It's not even in the, in the, in the ring. It's no good. Regardless of what else turns out, that is not what I would consider reasonable. See, what does C say? Oh, 4 times 4. This is just silly. This is just silly. It's not 4 times 4, it's 400. We don't have to worry about the bottom part. And what does D say? D says 400. Again, I don't like 400. 400 times 3, it's not 3, it's 4. And it's not 400. The answer is A. Answer is A. Now, the question is, what would we have, what would we have done? Listen very carefully. See here, here the question is a little bit different. This is not how you will see it in the exam. This is not how you will see it in the exam. Here they're asking us, among the four estimates that are given to us, which of the following four estimate, which is why I wrote down the question verbatim, which of the following estimate answers the question, answers answers to, is a good candidate as an as a appropriate answer to this quantity. And among the four, four estimates, A is the answer. But in the exam, that's not how it will appear. You look at they're going to ask you something where you will have to actually figure out the value of the, of the problem. In which case, you have to decide how to estimate. Let's do it out. How would we do it? Let's do it out. Now, we could leave it like 419 times 4 over 54. There's nothing wrong with it. But it will just create more work. So, as I said before, I'm going to use 420. And let's find out what's going on. As long as you're reasonable, you will find that among the four answer choices, answer choices are never too, too close to each other in a situation like this. They always give you far enough apart, where as long as you're reasonable, you should be able to recognize, you will be able to recognize what the right answer is. Let's sweet out. We're not going to use 419 because 419 is going to create more work, a lot more work. Let's pretend it's 420 times 4 over 54. Okay, watch what happens. We're going to pick up speed now. I see 54, I see a 4 here. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. If you divide top and bottom by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 54, how many 2's does 5 have? 5 has 2. 5 has 2 2's. 2 2's are 4. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that remainder of 1? That 1 goes and joins the 4 and becomes a 14. And 14 has 7 2's. 
Are you with me so far? 14 has 7 twos. Let's see what else you can do. Aha! Aha! What do you notice? Do you notice something? Again, if you watch the series, I don't know if I have it here. Well, I don't have it here. Watch a series of mine in the, in the, in the YouTube, Basic Man. Just type in, anytime you have, if you just type in Basic Man, you might find several different people doing the same exact thing. Obviously, I'm not the only one. Always type in my name if you're looking for something from me. Type in basic math. In that series, basic math, there are 100 videos there where we learn how to divide things very quickly, how to multiply things very quickly. And one of the things we learn is that, how do we tell if a number is divisible by 3? How, how do you tell if a number is divisible by 3? A number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digit, S-U-M sum of its digits, is divisible by 3. I'm not going to write everything on the blackboard here. We have done this many, many times. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, the number itself is divisible by 3. What do we notice here? 4 plus 2 is 6. Since 6 is divisible by 3, 42 is divisible by 3. 2 plus 7 is 9. Since 9 is divisible by 3, 27 is divisible by 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3, shall we? How many 3's does 27 have? 27 has 9 3's. 9 3's are 27. How many 3's does 4 have? 4 has 1 3. 4 has 1 3. After we take away the 3 from the 4, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? That 1 goes and joins the 2 and becomes a 12. And 12 has 4 3's. How many 3's does 0 have? 0 has no 3's. 0 has no 3's. What do we do next? Well, there's not much we can do here. There is not much we can do here. This, so it's basically 280 divided by 9. It is 280 divided by 9. One, one, 140 times 2 is 280 divided by 9. Let's do it here. 280 divided by 9. Okay, well, I'm going to pick up speed here as I keep saying. How many, how many 9 does 2 have? 2 has no 9s. 2 has no 9s. What happens to that 2? That 2 goes and joins the 8 and becomes a 28. And 28 has seven, 28 has 3 9s. 3 9s are 27. 3 9s are 27. After we take away the 27 from the 28, we have a remainder of 1. That 1 goes and joins the 0, becomes a 10. And 10 has 1 9. After we take away the 9 from the 10, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? Well, that remainder of 1 must be divided by 9. That remainder of 1, that remainder of 1 must be divided by 9 because 9 is what we're dividing by. It must be divided by 9. So the answer is approximately, it's approximately because it is not 49, it's not 420, it's 418.9, it's not 4, is that, it's not 54, is that. So it's approximately 31 and 1 9. 31 and 1 9. And that should be good enough for us to ascertain what the real answer is, recognize the real answer, and if you were to do it out with a calculator, which you cannot do in the exam, but if you were to do it out, you will find that the answer comes out to be approximately 30.27. So, in the answer choices, what are the answer choices? It's going to say 30, because they're going to say which of the following is the approximate value of this thing. They will say approximate, they will not give you the exact value, because the exact value goes on forever. Which of the following is the approximate value of this quantity? And one of the answer choices is going to say 30, maybe the other one will say 35, something else will say 36, who knows. And maybe some of them are going to be weird where they move the decimal places. And you should be able to recognize that among the answer choices, the one that comes closest to what you found, which is 31 and 1 9, is 30. And 30 is what we're going to pick had it been the real exam. We're going to make two more videos on this topic, estimation series part 2 of 3 and part 3 of 3 in the next two videos. I'll see you then, okay? Bye now.